Today we're installing a Honda 4 bar map sensor and turning the boost up. What's going on everyone? Today we're going to be installing this Honda 4 bar map sensor. Um, I prefer the Honda 4 bars because they're the simplest to work with, but the Omni 4 bars are pretty good too. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install this real quick. It's really simple. And then I'll go over some of the tuning side of things. So obviously it's pretty simple. You just disconnect the map sensor and using a Phillips head screwdriver. Um, these bolts can be pretty difficult to get off, but I've taken the map sensor off previously. Um, so you just undo the two Phillips head screws. Make sure not to drop them. Um, I put a brand new O-ring on already, but... But I'm gonna go ahead and just put the Honda 4 bar map sensor on, putting the Phillips head screws back in. Obviously that's pretty, pretty easy to do just to change the sensor itself. All right, now we just reconnect it. And now we'll go in the car and I'll show you um, how to dial it into your tune. All right, so you will need an engine management system, uh, whether it be AEM, Honda, Chrome, Neptune. Um, but you'll basically go into map sensor settings, which right here we're on Honda version 3, um, the S manager. And you'll go to map. Right now we're on stock map sensor. So we'll go to replacement map sensor. Sorry if I'm shaky guys. I don't know why I'm so shaky today. Um, and then we'll drop down menu right here. Basically just click the drop down menu and find the one that says Honda Omni 4 bar. Oops. The Honda Omni 4 bar right there. And it has the scale R which is 838 and the offset is 31. Not all 4-bar map sensors will be this easy to where you just put the uh, Honda and Omni 4-bar setting in and it's good to go. Um, some of them will need the scale R adjusted and the offset adjusted, um, such as like the Omni 4-bar. Some of them require you to adjust those settings. Uh, there is no one-size-fits-all for those, so they do just need to play it around with till your air fuels look right and until it's running smooth and not running rich. So I'm going to go ahead and hit upload, basically just uh, connect to the ECU, hit the upload button, and just like that, it's uploaded. So now we'll start it and make sure it runs right. This should be around 14 to 15 air fuel ratio. That's looking pretty normal to me. Yeah, we're on the little bit leaner side, but there we go. We'll see once it stabilizes. There we go. About 15.2 is normal. 14.7 um, is usually where it idles most of the time, but 14.7, 15.2, that's all pretty good. Um, you're not under boost, so it doesn't really matter too much. But um, yeah, so. We're going to go do a data log session. Um, I've already turned the boost up on the manual boost controller, which we will be installing a electronic boost controller. Um, should be here tomorrow, so maybe another video soon. Um, and then we'll be doing boost by gear. But I turned the boost up on the manual gauge, and our boost cut was set at 10.9. Now I have it set at 14. But the tune can more than easily take the 14 pounds, so we'll see where we're at. I'm gonna have Casey uh, hold the camera, and we're gonna data log the session. Um, so I'm gonna go in and get him real quick, and we'll see what she's doing boost-wise. All right, so Casey's gonna hold the laptop. He's gonna watch the data logging and all that stuff. Um, he'll hold the camera, and when we go to do a pool, you'll have the display um, on the laptop, which he'll show you real quick. It'll look like that. And right up here, you can see map. That's where the boost level will be. And then obviously air fuel ratios, engine coolant temperature, uh, speedometer will be over there. So we're gonna go do a pull real quick and we'll see how she does. Here we go.
right, so we turned it up a little bit. We're gonna go give it one more shot. six buck stage three from XTR or XTD I've had really good luck with them all the way up to 19 pounds um, or 18 pounds my bad and they did really good so uh, that's what we're probably gonna do but it's pulling really really good and wow um, yeah I'm super impressed with it so we'll get back to the house and I'll go over a few things real quick guys if you haven't checked out that garage link will be in the description Aubrey's uh, doing some power wheel stuff on that garage YouTube channel so Definitely go check it out. This video wouldn't have been possible without Aubrey's help. So I just wanted to say thanks. Now we'll get back to the video. Right here where I shift, you can see how it kind of, uh, right there, how it slopes down really softly, I guess. I don't know how to say it. That right there is where it's slipping the clutch. Um, same with, what was it, second to third? This is first to second. First to second. This is second to third. Second to third it does it, and then there you, go over here. you can see fourth gear does it too. It has like a deep like you know i don't know but that's the stage one clutch um that's in here it's not a bad clutch at all it did more than plenty until i turned the boost up um, held up really nice um, but like i said not all of them will just be drop in and you're good to go you will have to sometimes adjust some of the uh, scalar and offset now there's a mathematical equation to where you can figure that out but uh, me and math don't get along very well so we tend to just drop in the ones that have a drop down menu and it works great that way but go to Han Data's website to get it or to speed is it speed factory or pro civic pro civic yeah pro civic has the um Han Data map sensors as well but the speed factory ones i've heard are pretty good um, but yeah so it definitely pulls a lot better um besides the clutch slipping problem but that's to be expected when you're making more power than more than 200 which that stage one clutch was rated for 200 um, so definitely time to upgrade to the six puck stage three which will have uh, a sprung clutch not a unsprung since i do daily it still um, it'll have more of like a shuttery feeling which is totally normal with the cheaper uh, xtr clutch and we might upgrade the flywheel to a lightweight eight pound flywheel because the factory one's 16 pounds and for every one pound of weight you knock off um, of rotating mass it's 2.5 horsepower that's usable so it won't give you horsepower it'll just let you use more of what you already have I hope that makes sense but uh really happy with it um, he was going over the data log on the way home and I think we can just go one more click it will be good right around 13 pounds and this is still the stock engine stock head stock block stock Y7 uh, with the stock D15 B7 intake manifold um, which is an okay manifold. I just prefer the Z6 or the Skunk 2. I don't prefer the Y8, and I have many reasons as to why, so maybe I'll make a video of that someday. But it's doing really good. I'm really happy with it. So I just figured I'd give you this video, show you us going through the gears, and uh, tell you what's going to happen in the future. Six puck stage three, lightweight flywheel, and a short gear transmission, because this one is extremely long geared. But the air fuels were in a beautiful range. Um, we never went above 12.5 which that's good uh, 12 is good but i like it right where it's at so we're just gonna leave it there for uh for now we'll get it to the track eventually but i've got more videos coming out so definitely stay tuned um but i guess that's it for this video so i'll see you guys in the next live stream uh till then stay safe god bless and have an awesome new year's everyone